Welcome to Looking at the Markets. I am bullish on stocks for the rest of this year, and I've told you I'm bullish before, and I'm going to say it again. And that doesn't mean there won't be one more leg down in stocks. That wouldn't surprise me, but I think it'll be mild, and I expect stocks to uh, go generally upward for the rest of this year with maybe one more uh, little correction. Um, even after a strong January I, January, I still expect the stock market to generally go up and do well this year overall. Uh, and here's why. Now you have to make your own decisions, do your own due diligence. Don't do or try something just because somebody in a video says so. That's not the idea. But uh, I want to tell you why I'm thinking this way. So here's the NASDAQ. And uh, it's above 12,000 as I'm making this video. And why is it up? Uh, this is right after Jerome Powell just had a press conference and spoke to the media. Why is the NASDAQ up so much today? Uh, and also it was up a lot uh, after the FOMC meeting, the, the Fed meeting, where uh, they raised interest rates a quarter of a point, which is 25 basis points. And then Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell spoke after the uh, FOMC meeting and stocks went up a lot. And now he spoke again and stocks are up again. So what's going on? Well, basically, uh, first of all, I just want to do a little technical thing uh, in case you haven't noticed. Um, yes, there were high, lower highs and lower lows in the NASDAQ, but then it just uh, won't go below a certain level, around 10,000, let's say. And so I don't see another lower low here. I see a low and then holding it, holding it, and then a bounce. This is not another lower low. So if you're into technicals, then if you look at lower highs and lower lows, and then it stops and holds a certain level, uh, that is pretty strong. I think that's bullish already. Uh, so we had our correction. Uh, the Fed wanted to see a correction. It was a pretty deep one. The NASDAQ going from 16,000 down to about 10,000 and now pulling back up to 12,000. I think that's already bullish, but it's not just technicals. I want to talk about just the general macroeconomics of the situation. Uh, so the reason that uh, stocks went up, and especially the NASDAQ went up both times after Powell spoke, uh, is because they don't believe him. <laughs> they don't believe Jerome Powell. They don't believe the Fed. Uh, so let's take a look at something from Ryan Detrick, CMT. This is off of Twitter, and follow him if you want to. Two things to remember. When stocks are lower the year before, but then they gain during the Santa Claus rally period, first five days and January, what happens or what happened historically? Full year higher nine out of nine times and up 27% on average. Uh, and so... Past performance is not a guarantee of future returns. This is not a guarantee. But historically, every single time, going back to the 1950s, uh, when you had a bad year for stocks, but then uh, January was really good, uh, that sent stocks higher every single time in the past. And uh, again, I'm not just going to buy stocks or you know, buy the S&P or the NASDAQ, whatever, just because of this. But that's already a positive sign. Uh, but mainly it's because, and I agree with the market in this instance, usually I do the opposite of what the, mar opposite of what the market does, but here it's a trust issue. Uh, the market doesn't believe Jerome Powell, uh, doesn't believe his tough talk. Uh, he tried to talk a little bit tough there, uh, saying, oh, we're not totally finished with interest rate hikes yet. In fact, let, let me go to what he actually said. Um, after the, or during the press conference, uh, the disinfl disinflationary process, the process of getting inflation down, has begun. Uh, and it's begun in the goods sector, which is about a quarter of the economy. So he's admitting inflation is coming down, uh, and that is confirmed, by the way. Uh, one part of it is rent which went up a lot, as you can see, but it's rolling over. And if you go a year-over-year -year percentage change, this is just dollar change. But if you go by uh, the percentage change, it is really rolling over um, U.S. monthly rents. And I'm not saying rent is cheap. It's not, but it's a lot cheaper, or it's not going up nearly as much as it did uh, last year. So this is a pretty sizable part of inflation, uh, another big part of inflation is energy prices. Natural gas went down from $10 per MMBT, MMBTU, $10 to $2 and change. All right, so uh, that's and that's 
uh, why electricity prices, uh, elect, your electric bills went up so much. Uh, when natural gas went up to $10, now it's down to $2 and change. And so that's another part of inflation. Another big part of in inflation is gas prices. Well, uh, oil, uh, WTI, oil per barrel went up to $130 briefly. Uh, now it's down to 70 or 80. It's like 70 something per barrel. So that's down from the peak quite a bit. Uh, so also the money supply is way down and that's a big part of inflation when there's a, a big supply of money circulating in the economy and in the banking system. This is the US M2 money supply, one year percent change. Yeah, it went up a lot after the, uh, the crisis in March of 2020. The cocoa crisis, I'll call it because I can't say the word on YouTube. <laughs> All right, after the cocoa crisis, uh, the, uh, of course, the government flooded the uh, banking system and the, um, the economy with money, with stimulus money, stimmy checks, that kind of thing, bailouts, relief money, whatever you want to call it, and then look at what happened in the money supply. The change of money supply, way, way up, but now it's way, way down. It's even gone negative. So money is coming out of the system, of the economy. And so uh, how can inflation continue to go at a blistering pace if the money supply is actually shrinking uh, in terms of year over year percent change? Uh, now, what about people who are all worried about, oh, there's going to be a recession, huge, horrible recession? Well, I think we've been in a recession, even if the government doesn't want to admit it. Uh, I think we've been in a recession for a while, uh, but you know, if you're expecting the stock market to crash next week or next month because of a recession, uh, well, you know, there are plenty of jobs. Uh, lowest unemployment rate, 3.4%. And I know that's, that's a lie, and they, they mess with the numbers. They massage the numbers, as they say. But still, there are ample jobs, uh, maybe not the jobs you want, <laughs> but there are ample jobs for people who really want them. Uh, lowest unemployment rate, 3.4% since May of 1969. So that's you know a sign that I don't think the stock market is, is just going to crash based on a horrible recession. Again, there, it wouldn't surprise me if there's one more leg down in uh, the S&P 500, NASDAQ, Dow Jones, Industrial Average, that kind of thing. But I think even that will be mild. I, I don't think the economy will be so horrible this year that it will induce a, a terrible stock market crash. I don't think so at all. A lot of people will try to sell you that uh, that idea, try to tell you that. Uh, you know, maybe they're trying to sell something to you. I don't know. Um, and then here it is: the market doesn't believe Powell, doesn't believe the Fed. He tried to talk a little bit tough today, uh, but here we go. Uh, they're expecting the Fed funds rate to peak in the summer, in August, and then down, down, down. Now, am I expecting rate cuts, interest rate cuts this year? No. But I think uh, that uh, any tough talk from the Fed is false. I don't believe them. I mean, think about it. Once somebody lies to you once, you know, you put a question mark above anything they say in the future. Uh, and, you know, when the Fed said, remember when the Fed last year said that inflation uh, is or was transitory? You remember that? Did you believe them? I hope you didn't, and it certainly wasn't. Uh, or how about uh, when the Fed raised interest rates back in late 2018, trying to be tough, uh, and then the stock market went down 20%, and then what happened? Uh, the Fed turned right around and started cutting interest rates again, brought them down to a very low level like it was before. Uh, so if you're expecting that the Fed is just going to be super tough, uh, they'll change. They've shown uh, that they'll change their minds and their monetary policy. They'll change it on a dime. They'll turn it on a dime. So, uh, And they're admitting, Powell's admitting that disinflation has begun. Yeah, no kidding. We all knew that already. Uh, and he, he tried some tough talk, but it has a long way to go. These are the very early, very early stages. Yeah, I mean, okay. Uh, inflation is not 2% yet, of course. Uh, it didn't get up to 9.1% in June of last year. It, it didn't go up in a day or a week or a month, and it's not going to go down that quickly. It's going to take a little bit of time. That's true. Uh, so here, here's the tough talk. 
Uh, the reality is we're going to react to the data. Well, that's not saying anything. That's always been true. So if we continue to get, for example, strong mar labor market reports or higher inflation reports, it may well be the case that we have to do more and raise rates more than is priced in. That's him trying to talk tough. Again, do you believe him? Did you believe him before? Do you believe him now? So that's up to you whether you want to believe the Fed when he tries to talk tough. Even the market is not believing him anymore. And I don't usually do or go along with what the market does, but uh, I can't blame the market for uh, not believing <laughs> not believing the Fed. And when the, uh, you know, it, look at this, the market, NASDAQ is going up even after Powell said this because they're like, you know, the market's like, yeah, yeah, we don't believe you. Why should we? And that's a great question. That is the key question. Uh, so I think the NASDAQ is going to be up considerably by the end of the year. I, it wouldn't shock me if it dips maybe one more time, but if it gets below 10,000, I mean, it seems to be holding it quite nicely. If it goes a lot below 10,000, that would really surprise me. Surprise me a lot, actually. Uh, so, yeah, uh, if you are very afraid and you're uh, putting all of your wealth in cash right now, uh, well, it's up to you what you want to do. Uh, I have some things uh, going on, and I'm not just all in cash. And uh, so... You know, be careful out there. Be picky, be selective, but you don't have to be uh, anxious or afraid either. So I hope this inspired you. Uh, so thanks a lot. I appreciate it. More coming soon.